now I would like to introduce our to this evening's guest, Nikki Renee Anderson, who actually used to teach here but left us for other places. <laughs> so Nikki creates sculptures and installations that use her personal history to explore the feminine and the different roles of the self. Nikki has exhibited extensively, including AB Projects Gallery, Chicago Cultural Center, Hyde Park Art Center, Gaylord and Dorothy Donnelly Foundation, International Museum of Ceramics in Fianza, Italy, Grounds for Sculpture, and Arizona State University Museum Ceramics Research Center. Anderson's work has been reviewed in many publications, such as the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, Sculpture Magazine, Ceramics Art and Perception, and American Craft Magazine. She received an MFA from Stony Brook University and a BFA from Drake University. She's an assistant professor in the art and design department at Harper College, where she runs the ceramics program. Let's give a warm welcome to Nikki Renee Anderson. So I just want to say thank you to Joan and to the art and art history department for inviting me to be here. As Joan mentioned, I taught here for about 11 years as part-time faculty and just had a really rich experience here working with the students and the faculty. So I'm thrilled to be back to share my work with you. So this first image is of the piece that I did as my thesis graduate piece for my MFA program at Stony Brook. And I actually brought this piece to Chicago with me. Um, so I packed it in a truck and brought it to Chicago and I showed it here. So it was an important early piece for me. This piece explores, and a lot of my early work explored private spaces, such as bedrooms, dressing rooms, and bathrooms, because the objects within those spaces become metaphors for identity. The objects have a whimsical quality that suggests imagery related to fairy tales and fantasies. The intertwining of sculpture and voices is important, and therefore, some of the work incorporates sound. I began placing my voice inside of these sculptures because I'm so soft-spoken, and I was interested in the power of soft voices. These pieces require a person or a viewer to lean in close and listen to what each voice is saying. And there's sort of a cacophony of voices in the installation. The voice in these pieces was my own voice, but I manipulated it to sound like the voice of a little girl. And I'm going to play a short video for you. what the sound was like. Can you see my underwear? Oh gosh, I hope no one can see my underwear. It's private. Can you see my underwear? Oh gosh, I hope no one can see my underwear. Conceptually, I was thinking about the way that I've often used dressing up as a fantasy escape, but also as a hiding place. The dressing room is a place where I learn to both accentuate and hide myself by learning how to put on makeup, style my hair, and dress up. This next piece is called Cupcake Dreams, which explores the realm of sleep, dreams, and anxiety. My anxieties wake me up at night, disrupt my sleep, and this pattern began as a child. I used the image and the fairy tale Princess and the Pea in this piece and played with that in the various beds that existed in the installation. In Bathroom Tale, Sugar, Spice, and Everything Nice, I am connecting the Mother Goose nursery rhyme, What, what Are Little Girls, with objects from the bathroom and the female body. Forms such as a bathtub, toilet, and sink morph into desserts and other sweets. You can see that the scale of these pieces is much smaller than adult size and about the size of a small child. The bathroom is a space to focus on beauty and hygiene. These pieces incorporated a resin surface that was meant to look like syrup, but also water from the bathtub overflowing, water from the toilet and then the sink overflowing. Also, this piece was inspired by the forms of historic fertility goddesses. The theme of desserts and the body become, an important, become important in my work later, and this is the beginning of that exploration. 
The jewel boxes were the next pieces I made exploring the body, beauty objects, and dessert forms. At this point, I had been making a lot of larger scale work for installations, and I wanted to make some smaller pieces. And so I started thinking about making these small sculptures and then making the boxes that contained them. As a viewer sort of looked at the initial view of the box, they couldn't necessarily see what was inside, but then as they got closer, they could see what was inside. So there was a kind of experience of two views of the piece. This shift in scale was important for me to work on and allowed me to think about my work in new ways. I also thought about the context, the contents of the boxes as tiny installations, and the form of the container gave the work structure. After that, I began to work smaller with other work as well. This piece is titled Cherry Bodies. I changed materials a little bit at this point and started working. I had been working with a two-part resin for the kind of syrupy material, which was difficult to work with and a public, I had a public shared studio setting because it gave off toxic odor. And after talking to a friend of mine who was a painter, I switched to acrylic medium. Um, and that was great because it was archival and it was safer and easier to work with. As I made this piece, I mixed up the acrylic medium and it was like a hot pink color and then I poured it on the piece and as it dried it was bright red and I wasn't sure that I liked it it was sort of like one of those moments where I was like okay well this is done so I have to live with it um, and as I spent time looking at it I started to like the idea that it was like cherry syrup but also like blood and lipstick and nail polish and I found the range of references potentially like ri very rich for the work I was doing. Um, so I made a whole series of cherry pieces then. I just kind of kept going with it. This is an installation shot from a solo show I had at Elmer's Art Museum. Um, the sculptures resemble abstract desserts, which reference the female body. As a child, my dad owned a restaurant and bakery, and I spent many hours there with him while he was working. Sometimes I helped out with the cooking and baking tasks. Other times I would just pick a treat from the bakery case to eat. The project reflects the beauty and delight I saw and experienced at the bakery, as well as the gluttony and shame of my body. It also reflects cultural expectations and stereotypes about the female body. These pieces are constructed, so they're ceramic sculptures, and they're constructed with a combination of slab geometric elements and pinch and coil organic elements. And I wanted the forms to feel as though they were being squeezed or contained in different ways. This group of work was made while I was at a residency in southern France. And this was the first residency I'd done out of graduate school, and it was about six years after graduate school. It was an important time for me because I was in this really amazing town called Valerie's. And this is where like Picasso had his ceramic studio and has a big tradition of ceramics. And it was a moment where I was working with other artists and getting to do a lot of research and get a lot of feedback. So that was great. And at the end of this residency, I had an exhibition that was a group exhibition with the other artists, and I wanted to incorporate sound. And up to that point, I had always used, you know, language very much was a part of what I was doing. And so with this piece, I was really thinking, how could I use sound and the voice without using language? Because there was this kind of, you know, language barrier in terms of I didn't speak French very little French, and also many people in the town didn't speak English. So I started playing with that idea, and that really influenced the way that I use sound going forward. Play a video of that. Oh. So I started to really think about sound more in terms of the voice um, and breath and other things instead of language. Um, so this is another installation shot. 
And this piece is breathing cherry. So for this piece, I use breath and the voice. And each piece had a voice singing or breathing. And I was thinking about the way that breathing and singing are connected to our psychological state. And the pieces range from sounding like a kind of strange choir to being very calm at times and then sometimes very anxious at times. And they were squeezed and expanding and had a soft pillow-like appearance. Each sculpture was unique and a little bit different. So this work is the beginning of my exploration of the garden. This is for an exhibition I had called Secret Bodies. And I really was thinking about the garden as another private space, another extension of private space. And I'm interested in the way the garden becomes a space for growth, renewal, and transformation. Also, it is a place where the cycles of life are present. I have memories from childhood of going outside in the garden by myself early in the morning. And I still like to do this as an adult. When I wake up early, I like to go outside. And I knew all of the flowers that could be smelled, touched, and even eaten in the garden. It was a place that I felt safe and also very much in power. So this was a series that was also part of that work called the Icelandic Garden Photos. In 2010 and 11, I did a residency in January in Iceland. And it was a really amazing experience. And being in Iceland in January is a moment when it's quite dark there. So there's only about three to four hours of daylight. So doing a photographic project was a little bit challenging, but also a lot of fun. The ceramic sculptures that I made were definitely inspired by the culture, weather, and landscape of Iceland. And when I did the pieces, I really wasn't, I didn't fire them. I just sort of built them and painted them with underglazes and then took them out into the landscape to photograph. There's a really strong tradition of myths and fairy tales about elves and the lava fields where I photographed my work. And I think that was also a big influence in these pieces. So I only had a few hours of daylight and I would sort of try to get out into the right location and catch the light at, right, at the right moment to take the photos. And it was really kind of amazing the kind of cast shadows that could occur and the play with scale that I was able to do with the photos. I was thinking about these sculptures as a stand-in for a figure or for myself in this kind of otherworldly space. So this is a piece that I did at the Lincoln Park Conservatory. This was created for a show that happened during the International Sculpture Conference in Chicago. And I used my Icelandic uh, garden photos as my proposal for this exhibition and for this piece. And so I worked in the fern room, which had a lot of mossy rocks, and it was just really kind of ideal for my sculptures. For this piece, I, the, sh the piece had to be able to get wet and stay in the kind of damp space for a long period of time, which sounds kind of simple, but I had been working in ceramic and using cold surfaces and painted surfaces. I came to ceramics really from the perspective of sculpture, so I wasn't really like using it in a traditional way at all. And so for this piece, I glazed the surface of the sculptures so that it could withstand the water. And it was an important moment for me because I began to really kind of connect with that process and sort of embrace some of the more traditional parts of ceramics. This is a bronze series which I made around that time. I made these pieces in clay and then made a rubber and plaster uh, molds to cast them in wax. And I worked in a friend's foundry here in Chicago to make these pieces. I had worked in bronze in graduate school, but not since then. And I was interested to see how the change in material would affect the work. The sculptures in this series are abstract, organic forms, which represent the body. I was thinking about forms that flow, bubble, grow, and drip. Also, the pieces relate to the idea of growth, multiplication, and expansion. 
Oozing Drops is an installation of sculptures and sound and cut vinyl, exploring the physical and psychological experiences of um, pregnancy and motherhood. And I worked on this piece while I was pregnant and then soon after my daughter was born. And I was really thinking about kind of our connection. And I really thought of it as like a little love letter to her. And this piece incorporated sound, which were um, my voice and her voice. And basically, I just recorded our sort of sounds in daily life and experience. Um, I'll play that sound for you. The experience of motherhood then sort of influenced a number of pieces I made at that point. This is from a solo show that I had at Northeastern Illinois University. And the part of this show was these pieces called Drip, Drop, Dribble, the dribble portraits. And I was um, made these pieces again, like while I was pregnant and then after my daughter was born. And I was thinking about them as portraits and the oval shape was sort of a response to that idea. Well, I, I took her to a residency. My husband and I took her to a residency in Maine. And it was one of those moments where I was just really trying to figure out my new kind of role, working as a mother and as an artist and sort of what that meant and how I would incorporate kind of the two things together. I think it was one of those moments that was amazing and really kind of profound. It was also really unsettling, right? So both things were true. And the pieces were sort of about those feelings, right? That kind of connection that we had and the intensity of it and also all of the kind of bodily experience that was happening during that time. And this is Standing Bodies. This is exhibited in a kind of window gallery space at Wabansi Community College. And it was ceramic sculptures with laser cut acrylic. I was interested in using the window of the, uh, the window space, and so I made these cut vinyl drips that sort of flowed throughout the window space. And then the sculptures were inside the window. So there was sort of two views of the piece, a different view from outside and then inside. Domestic Dots addresses themes of domestic space and motherhood. I both sort of, you know, one of the things that I'm always working on with my work and my life is that I both part participate in traditional roles and then I'm always trying to sort of reimagine them as well and create new roles. And so I made these pieces for a show that was at uh, a project space in LA called AB Projects. This is a really interesting space where the person who runs it is really interested in artists who are using ceramic, but Subvert, subverting traditional ideas about ceramic. I began placing the ceramic forms in these domestic spaces to represent growth and the integration of these forms in the spaces. And so the, the final version of this was photographs, a series of photographs. Sugar Dreams is an installation that incorporates sculptures that reference dessert forms, the body, and cellular growth. The forms gradually expand from a single, single round shapes to multiple shapes and then larger sculptures. Ideas of growth and expansion are in, and birth are referenced. And this installation was a commission for a private collector. 
This was a pretty, it was like the first time I'd ever done this kind of experience. We communicated over email and I would send drawings of the work and then make each sculpture. And gradually it became this larger installation. Oh, and this was part of a show that was here, the Glass Curtain Gallery. And the theme of the show is about repetition. And looking at my work, repetition is all over the place. It's so much a part of it. But I hadn't really thought about it really in a clear way until I was in the show. And it was really lovely to be included in that and be a part of it. So this is just like some images of research. So I'm always looking at different things to inspire the work I do. And so there's, you know, images from my garden. Also, my great grandmother, her home was filled with these incredible antiques. We have a family farm that's in Missouri and her home was near there. And the first time, you know, this was like a normal space for me, but the first time my husband came to see her house, he was like, this place is so crazy. It's like a museum. And so all of that furniture now is actually just in a storage space. But it's just beautiful. And the kind of forms, decorative forms of it have had an influence in the work that I do. And this is some imagery from the American Folk Art section of the Art Institute. And also a, a book about ornamentation. I do also do a lot of drawings, and um, sometimes the drawings come into the work, so they're preparatory for sculptures. And these are some of the sculptures that I made after those drawings and some of that looking at furniture. So they're inspired by that research and the objects from my great-grandmother's home. And this was part of a solo show that I had titled Sugar Garden. The form of the sculptures was both geometric and organic, formal and sensual, refined and also whimsical. And the details of texture and color are inspired by the decorative forms, natural forms, and are really intended to draw a viewer to look closer. These wall sculptures are called the Sugar Blossom series, which I made here at Columbia when I was a faculty member here. And I was thinking about them as topographical maps or records of the natural process. They are made of wood, ceramic, and also acrylic medium. And the wood uh, is was the wood insets were cut on the laser cutter um, in the shop in the tenth floor uh, down the street. And then I laminated them all together and sanded them and painted them. Ceramic pieces were inlaid in the wood and then coated with acrylic. So I do work in traditional ways, but I also work with mixed media often. And this is an example of that. I thought about them as blossoms with playful and repetitive bodily texture. So a few years ago, my daughter and I were walking home from the park and she picked one of these t tiny grape, I think they're called hy hyacinth flowers, right? And I had seen the, you know, I've seen these a million times. I know what they are. They're like a weed almost. So even though they're not, right, they're everywhere. And, but she showed it to me and said, mom, look at this amazing flower. And I was like, oh yeah, it's amazing. And this could be an amazing sculpture. So it was kind of like one of those moments where I saw the world again through her eyes, right? And I think that's kind of one of the great things that can happen. It was so simple and yet a really great moment for me. And it represented kind of a way of thinking that I was trying to embody, which was about this idea of kind of seeing simple things in everyday things in a new light and also really trying to kind of slow down. So I made a whole series of sculptures about these kind of forms. And this is a solo show that I had actually last fall at Obanzi Community College with all of them together. The forms are exploring the delight I experienced in that moment of looking with my daughter and the sort of delight in making the pieces as well. 
This is an installation shot of a solo show that I had, a second solo show that I had at AB Projects in LA. And this show was titled Our Garden Of. And I was thinking about each sculpture as a person, also kind of a floral form. Um, so many of these pieces were made actually during the pandemic. And, you know, like everyone, I was really just sort of spending time inside, in my house, in my garden, um, and really reflecting on the idea of family, connections, and noticing things more carefully. This piece is called Unfurling Plant. And each piece is sort of representative of a person and a psychological experience as well. So I was thinking about the idea of an unfurling fern and the way that, you know, the image is connected to the type of growth we all do throughout our lifetimes in different ways. I love the image of the uncurling or rolling up to meet our full potential. This piece is called Bubble Plant. I was thinking about my daughter and her bubbling energy and how intense that energy is. She brought this toy home one day and I started playing with it. And I think I played with it way more than she did. I realized and kind of playing with some of her toys, how much I love tactile things like this kind of toy, these kind of fidget toys and slime is something I actually really like. And I guess it makes sense because I work with clay. So I thought this object was just kind of beautiful and really inspired me to make a, a number of other pieces as well. And it sort of referenced her expansive energy too. So I installed, I went to LA to install this show and it was a great experience because I was able to work in the space for a week with the woman who runs the gallery. And my daughter came with me and she also helped install. The woman who ran the gallery was incredibly like generous with her time and space and allowed my daughter to do this giant drawing in the back with clay. So it was just kind of this really profound kind of experience of installing my work, working with her and my daughter. It was a lot of fun. So this is from a two-person show that I had in Chicago last fall. And this piece, I, I wanted to show this piece, which is the bubble garden, which is a further exploration of that bubbling, expansive form and thinking about that kind of bubbling energy and the kind of joy of that experience. I made this piece very quickly, so I had a very limited time frame to work on it. And it felt like it fit conceptually, right? To have to make it super fast. And then it wasn't totally perfect. Each form has some imperfections, but it was a good experience. I had an opportunity to create this installation in a fireplace setting. When I first saw the piece, I was concerned about the dark woodwork. And I didn't know if my work would fit in that kind of a setting, which sort of now I'm like, that's crazy that I wasn't sure about it. But it really uh, what, it was different than anywhere I had shown before. Um, but putting in my work in this space allowed me to see the forms in a different, with a different idea of color um, and contrast. And I was pleasantly surprised by the color in that setting. I also made these and placed these smaller sculptures to sit in the library shelves of the space. Um, so this is just an image of my studio. Um, I have a studio at home in my basement. I rented a studio in Humboldt Park for about 10 years, um, but now I have a bungalow and I just have a studio in my basement. It's perfect for me um, for right now in my life. Um, and this is a little bit about my process. So I make things uh, I hand build often uh, and make things in clay. Um, this is made with stoneware clay. So initially the surface is this kind of rich, dark gray color. Um, and I fire it to mid-range temperature. Uh, and I have a kiln in my studio at home and I'm always loading it. Here's a video of me loading the kiln. Let's see if it'll play. It may not work. I'm going to go to the next image. Uh, 
Um, there we go. And so I bisque fire the work in my kiln at home. And it comes out and it's this kind of really neutral, off-white color. Um, I then am taking it to the school where I teach and glazing, sp glaze spraying. Um, and so I'm loading the kilns there to fire the work. And then there's always that kind of nice moment when it comes out of the glaze firing, which is mostly nice. Sometimes it's a surprise too. Um, okay, so I am done with my talk, but I'd be happy to take any questions if you have any questions. <laughs>